All right, so after the victory of um, President Donald J. Trump as the president elect, there are responsibilities that he is going to fulfill when he is being sworn in in January. So let's look at some of the mandate. All right, so without any further ado, let's get down to it. Some phenomenal news, everybody, leaked by CNN. I didn't leak it, but uh, it's really good news. Stephen Miller, who is one of the smartest people I have ever met. He is as sharp as a pocket knife. This guy is as good as it gets. And he is loyal to the president and his agenda. Has now been named, according to CNN, and I can neither confirm or deny this news, uh, as the deputy chief of staff for policy. Everybody, this is as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. Stephen Miller understands the Trump agenda incredibly. This is a perfect compliment to Susie Wiles. So think about it. You get Stephen Miller. You get Susie Wiles. You get Tom Homan. I mean, this is an all-star team. You could not have dreamed a better individual to be involved in the intimate details here. And by the way, Stephen Miller, he knows every little nook and cranny. If you are wondering if President Trump was committed to fulfilling the mandate, look at these selections. In fact, I want to get a piece of tape here of Stephen Miller speaking because he is, he is great on television. He understands the intricacies and the details. He knows what it is going to take to put together and marshal the resources to staff the federal government. It is the momentum that we are seeing right now. You know what You know what Stephen Miller said at the Madison Square Garden rally? America is for Americans and Americans only. This guy is going to be like the third most important person in the White House, second or third post, according to CNN. Play cut 354. I want you to think for a minute about the decades of abuse that has been heaped upon the good people of this nation. Their jobs looted and stolen from them and shipped to Mexico, Asia, and foreign countries. The lives of their loved ones ripped away from them by illegal aliens, criminal gangs, and thugs who don't belong in this country. I'm not just saying that. You've read the stories. It happens every day. You read one of these heartbreaking headlines. Who's going to stand up for our daughters? Who's going to stand up for the girls of America, the women of America, the families of America? Who's going to stand up and say, the cartels are gone, the criminal migrants are gone, the gangs are gone. America is for Americans and Americans only. It's as good as it gets. So I want to play some more pieces of tape here, though, that I think are, are critically important. Let's go here. Uh, ABC News, Donald Trump got one out of every three voters of color. And Charlemagne can't even believe this. I actually, let's start with 340 and then we'll go to 351. And this is an incredibly important point. Our politics are realigning away from race and they are emphasizing class and values. That is what we've always wanted. It turns out the man that they call a Nazi, a fascist, and a racist realigned our politics away from race obsession and race fixation. And instead, we are now emphasizing action, agency, character, and class. Your class is far more important and should determine and dictate your politics a lot more than the melanin content in your skin. Play cut 350, please. Well, I think that, you know, people have um, different issues that they care about. And I think that there's nobody out there that's a single issue voter. I think some of this is a backlash to race and gender and identity politics. But man, most people, they just care about keeping food on their on they table and keeping a roof over their head. And I think sometimes people forget about that. I think that they forget about, you know, the working class. And I, for whatever reason, Donald Trump speaks to the grievances of the working class in a real way. And I keep telling folks, people will forget what you did. They'll forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. We'll go to the next tape, piece of tape here where it continues. ABC News, Trump got one out of three every voter of color. Play cut 351. What, what, what do you make of the, the, the demographics here? I mean, Trump got one out of every three voters of color. 
No. Yeah. One out of th thirty-three no. percent. Really? Yeah. When you say color, you mean like black, brown, everything. Oh, well, I think that, you know, people have um, different issues that they care about. And I think that there's nobody out there that's a single issue voter. I think some of this is a backlash to race and gender and identity politics. But, man, most people, they just care about keeping food on their on they table and keeping a roof over their head. He's not wrong. And look, his shock is, and his bewilderment is, is, uh, is important. However... It's very important to note that Charlemagne is saying, oh, yes, we're going, we're focusing on housing, grocery prices, things that actually matter, not just irrelevant race criteria. Blake, are you still there? I think Blake is still uh, yeah, in, I'm chair still here, <laughs> in Phoenix. Blake, your take on this, on Donald Trump and his ability to win one out of three voters of color. Yeah, I mean, it's... It really is, it's a testament to the realignment effect he could have on policy questions. I feel like for decades you had Republicans who would basically accept all these Democrat premises, which is that it was like racist to disagree with the Democrats on things. And the only reason that people weren't voting Republican is that Republicans were, were too racist, basically. Like, this was kind of the Paul Ryan assumption. So they would go around basically just giving lectures to voters of color saying, like, oh, you know, I'm not actually racist. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work. It wasn't a very winning message. Trump just kind of comes out like a sledgehammer and he's like, yeah, we're going to make America great again. It's bad. People are coming in. They're stealing your jobs. He, he just has this intense machismo he lays it on very straight he's very blunt and it turns out this is a winning political message he doesn't concede all of this presumptive ground to the left he doesn't presume that the left is like morally superior to him which was a very common problem for republicans 15 years ago and once you stop conceding that ground you can actually win people straight up and it also helped that the left just completely went off the deep end. It got hijacked by a relatively small part of the party that just was very profoundly insane on all of these social questions. And again, if you had this old Mitt Romney-esque thing, your attitude would be, well, you know, they're morally in the right direction and we'll catch up eventually. And instead you had someone who would just counterpunch and say, yeah, the left is actually super insane. When you say it very directly like that, you can yes. win a lot of people over. It, the entire Democrat like monopoly on those voters was based on getting people to vote more liberal than their actual beliefs were. And Trump kicked in the door and said, you don't have to do that anymore. Blake, I totally agree. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. We're doing so much good work here at Turning Point USA. Also, get your tickets to AmFest. That's AmFest.com, the biggest party of the year in Phoenix Convention Center. We have Tucker Carlson and really big speakers coming. I'll be there. It's going to be unbelievable. Meet your future husband, future wife. It's going to be great. AmFest.com, A-M-F-E-S-T.com. Get there. Uh, go get the tickets. It's going to be amazing. And again, please subscribe and hit this bell. We appreciate it. And if you listen to audio podcasts, subscribe to the Charlie Kirk Show podcast. That's Charlie Kirk Show podcast. We won, everybody. We won. I need to get this hat. Daisy, can you get me one of these hats? We won. And uh, if you guys want a limited edition signed MAGA hat right here, last thing I'll say is become a member, members.charliekirk.com, to get a limited edition MAGA hat. We have 5,000 to send out, don't we, Daisy? Over, like 8, we have 8,000 hats I have to sign. 8,000 hats. God bless. All right, so that's a very interesting one looking at the couple of appointments that President Donald J. Trump has made or has allegedly um, made, maybe probably until um, January. That's when we'll know if maybe probably the list of the appointments are true or not. But then one thing that is very important in his, um, as a leader, of course, a mandate has been given to him as the President of United States. And then it's been expected that some of the policy that he told the voters or he told Americans that he is going to do we are expecting you know since some of the implementation of some of this thing and of course we expect a group of people that will help him